Hi everybody, thank you so much for being here today. Um, who's excited for a full face of drugstore makeup? But this stuff is all, they're all items that I received recently in PR. So I thought that might be kind of interesting to talk about, show you what I actually do get in terms of PR makeup, but um, keeping it to drugstore because I just kind of thought that would be a way to somewhat categorize it. This time of year, I feel like more PR related makeup comes in because it's close to the holidays and it's just like there's more to send it seems like. So I'm looking at my little Ziploc bag here. I've got some ColourPop, Milani, um, quite a bit of CoverGirl and I thought it was really interesting because CoverGirl sent out this box and there were a lot of different things in it and there was like a fairly recently launched, launched mascara, that clean mascara. Um, I've talked about that before on my channel. They had like some brand new brow products, some newish lip products, a couple of what I think they said were reformulated eyeshadow palettes. And then very prominently, like at the top of everything, was CoverGirl Clean Liquid Foundation. It's like they took something that was before PR's time, you know, before the time of influencers, and like kind of re did a re-promote on it in the midst of some newer stuff. At first I thought it was really strange. I'm like, where's this coming from? Clean makeup? Like when was the last time I used CoverGirl Clean Makeup? But the more I thought about it, I was like, yeah, you know, the, it, there are a lot of brands that have products that have been, you know, long-standing parts of the line, but yet there might be a lot of people in the online space who don't even really, like, know about it because it hasn't been, like, launched or something in their presence, you know? I don't know. Anyway, we're using some CoverGirl Clean Makeup today, you guys. Uh, I chose the shade Medium Light. They sent, like, I don't know, five or six different colors. I'm trying to twist this off. See, I don't like stuff like that. I don't like the stuff hanging off. I'm gonna be snipping that. It says, designated for normal skin, natural lightweight coverage that feels and looks fresh, water-based, won't clog pores. Okay, so we're gonna shake her up and pop it on. 135 medium light. Ooh, does it smell? Has that kind of Noxzema smell. Still, classic. I mean, I know I definitely used this stuff a long time ago. I may have, you know, at some point during my YouTube channel's life, like, repurchased and felt nostalgic about it or something, but it's truly been a while for me on this. I definitely was one who way before YouTube, like probably in my high school days, I had this and I definitely went through some clean pressed powders. That was the main thing. I'm gonna get my expert face brush and all right, let's just see what this does. It is super lightweight, very light coverage. I can't get over the Noxzema smell. I haven't smelled that in so long, but I'm instantly taken back. Okay, well, here I am. Um, of course, I had my skin all moisturized before this, but is it matte? Is it just kind of natural finish? I wouldn't say I feel super matte. I feel like adding just a little more, like it's, it's not bad. It definitely has evened some things out. I'm looking at areas here, kind of at the top of the cheek, where I'd have some freckles or a little remaining melasma, and it's definitely like gone over that. Light to medium coverage is where I pin this, but I wanna see if I can build just a little. It really was a pretty good shade match for me, I'd say. Again, 135 medium light. I'm gonna give a couple more dots right up in here. You guys, we had parent-teacher conferences yesterday. They went so well. Like, I just wanted to cry afterward. Like, I was just so happy with what the teachers said and so impressed. Okay, dabbing this on. Just kind of seeing if it builds a little bit. I think it does. I think it is buildable. I think there's a, a tinge of luminosity with this. I'm not saying there's shimmer in this makeup, but there's... As I look up close at my skin, it, it's not... 100% fully matte. I'm not upset about it, and with the addition of some concealer, I'm sure I'm gonna be really happy with this look. I just remember the ads with, was it Nikki Taylor? Old school cover girl ads with the clean makeup. Nostalgic. Okay, I don't have a brand new concealer, so I'm just gonna use this infallible full wear from L'Oreal. Um, so a real full coverage concealer. We're gonna get where we wanna be in terms of a perfected under eye today. Around the nose too. Little on the chin, little on the zit. Stuff does so well. So I just kind of breeze through that step. But I've been using lately just my expert face brush to overall get concealer blended in. And then I come in with this number 57 from Sephora just to really hit the pinpointed areas. But I have no complaints about the coverage that's all over my skin right now. I think it looks really good. I need coffee.
We're going to set this. I'm going to go back to Maybelline Fit Me because I just feel like it's been a while. I've been using my Wet n Wild powder so much. I do love that stuff, but this is great too. I use this in the fair shade and I will just set my under eye, set my T-zone. I really wish they sent some clean powder. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been nice because that was really the thing I remember using the most when I was first starting out with makeup. And I feel like there was a little tingle on my skin when I applied the foundation. And they always talked about, you know, the Noxzema tingle. Okay, so I'm a little more matte now that I've got that powder all over. T-zone and um, under eye. And then, sorry, we're on a little stretch here of some not new stuff. I'm going to use my Wet n Wild Wet Shady Beaches Color Icon Bronzer. A lot of things came in VR, but just not everything. And I'm just going to get this around my hairline like I like to do. This is just a lot of bang for your buck bronzer. You know, it's pigmented, it's easy to put on, it's quick to build up. Love that stuff. Love it. Now with this PR stuff, I have not been sitting around using it. Like today was just going to be a day where I busted out anything new and tried it on and I thought, well, I'll shoot the video of it because I'm a day behind on shooting videos. It's been one heck of a week with mom being in the hospital after this hernia surgery. and I've just been, you know, very preoccupied in a lot of ways, trying to do a lot of different things. But this was going to be the morning where I just got this stuff out and played with it. And I thought, I'm not going to miss that Saturday video. I'm going to do this. Um, so Milani sent a package that included really a lot of things that I had tried, like the Ungilded Mattes palette, some different lip products that I definitely had used, like these lipsticks, the matte lipsticks, but also cream and powder blush palettes, the Cheek Kiss Cream Blush and Sun Kiss Glow, and the Cheek Kiss Powder Blush in Golden Hour Glow. So I'm going to take a good 15 minutes to unpeel the sticky. But I'm going to use both today. I thought I would just layer them up. We can observe the cream and then see how the powder goes. Milani is a brand that really does blushes right, in my opinion, so I predict a good experience here. So Milani had a nice, like, really thin formula in the individual um, blushes, so let's see. Yeah, I'm feeling that here, too. Pigmentation, but a really thin kind of texture there. So there's your three different shades. Um, they just blend in really easily into the skin, not pressing hard, and they don't have a real tacky texture either. Um, I'm kind of feeling like going straight in with my brush that I like to use for this kind of thing, and I'm going to use this Dusty Rose shade, because that might be kind of the hardest to translate exactly. Like, how's that going to look on the cheeks? Oh, we got color. We got color. Not that you would need to layer up cream and powder blush, but I'm just going to be doing it in this video just to show you, just because we're having fun. But there, that's nice. That's that shade right here. So just doing kind of a dabbing motion, it blends in with absolute ease. Again, if you're familiar with the individuals, it feels like the same texture and everything. Lovely. Maybe we do just a little bit of this middle one. Kind of looks like a bright coral, like some red in it too. So I kind of do a dab here, and because I want to distribute the product, I get a little dab on the other side, too, immediately. And then just press it in. Oh, blush time is happy time. All right. I enjoy that. And I'm not scared of the dark one either, but I just, I, I don't want to go too far because I do still have another type of blush to put on. Um, okay, Cheek Kiss Golden Hour Glow. Ooh, so we probably are working with a highlight here. What's going on with this deep darkness? I'm sure that would be nice on richer skin tones, but I'm kind of wondering what it would do on me too. A light, light pink. And then this, pretty certain that's going to look like a highlight, okay? All right, let's do it. Let's pop the cheek with the pink at first. Really nice. Nice, light, youthful pink. Um, kind of a little bit of powder kick up as I go into the product. I'm just going to go straight over the nose for a little extra color. Nice, nice. I'm going to do the lightest dab ever into this shade because I can just tell there's a lot of pigment, there's a lot of softness. And do like just kind of a little light. There, barely touch the cheeks with it right down here. That can be used, I think, on about any skin tone if you're just willing to be soft with it. Willing, if you're willing. 
I really like that they went with a couple of shades that maybe we're not all crawling with in our collection. Like this deep, rich, like deepened, dusty rose is nice. And then I like this lighter, more bu kind of bubblegummy pink, really. Um, but it doesn't show up in, in a cheesy, tacky way on the skin at all. And then I'm going to use some of this. Okay, that's not that much of a highlight. Oh, wow. That surprised me. In an opaque swatch on my finger, maybe it was bringing out more shimmer, but it just looked kind of like a little bit dark. Yeah, it's just not giving me highlighter vibes on the skin at all. If I had no blush going on, I would start with that. Maybe in another video, I'll like put that on because I bet you would see it a little bit as like a, a nude peach kind of blush. But I'm not sure if you can see, it is giving me some glow to my cheeks, but it's just not in a real spotlighted way. I'm pulling out my Catrice Sungasm here just to um, make sure I'm nice and bright. Okay, I've got a few things on my cheeks today. <laughs> I've worked in two blush palettes, highlighter, but here we are. I'm grabbing for my Wet n Wild um, Natural Finish Setting Spray. I really like this stuff, but now I'm to the point of like loving and obsessing over it. I mean, such a good sprayer. Love what it does for the skin. Like it really does um, have an effect on, on any kind of powdery look on my skin and everything looks really pulled together. Just more one with the skin as I like to say. So these blush palettes, I would say they're a hit. Um, I wanna experiment a little more here. There's a deeper shade that I think would sheer out absolutely beautifully on the cheeks. I'm picturing that deep shade with like a really deep lip, maybe a berry eye. Mm. Um, but we do have a new brow thing. Like I said, there was a new brow product in with the CoverGirl stuff. It's called Easy Breezy Brow 24 Hour Brow Ink Pen. Precise tip draws hair like strokes. It is not a brush tip, it is a felt tip. And I'm using the shade called, oh, don't do one of those things where you don't put the shade name on the actual product. I went with the shade Soft Brown because we all know I've had experiences with these, we all know. Like, no, everybody doesn't see everything you do, Em. It's well known in the world that I sometimes have experiences with brow pens that are less than perfect. Okay, taking the spoolie wand, which like, it looks like a, instead of a regular spoolie, they're giving us what looks like a rubber bristle brush on a mascara. That's interesting. Oh, we also got sprouts here. So this is supposed to last a really long time. We're gonna see if it can control itself. Sometimes with these pins, it's like feast or famine. Either can't make them show up, or in many cases, they deposit way too much at one time. They have no control. This one, I'm feeling like I'm controlling it. I'm getting my little hair-like strokes up in here. I'm kind of digging into my brow because I do have existing brow hair. I'm trying to get in there to make sure I'm getting in touch with the skin. I can feel it on my skin. Okay, and then it's interesting that with a product like this, I don't really think of it as something that would need to be raked through the brows, but I'll take it. Okay, so there's one brow in the soft brown shade of the Easy Breezy Brow. Um, gosh, pretty easy, I gotta say. My favorite pen style brow product probably continues to be the um, Benefit Brow Micro Filling Pen. That stuff is just, that's so good. I feel like it's just so effortless and you can really trust that it's not gonna overload you, but yet it does show and it keeps showing. It's not like you use up all the juice in, in a few applications, you know, it's really good. This, I feel like I'm taking a bit more time with this just because I think instead of the tri-tip idea, we only have the one, but that does obviously lend itself to the hair-like strokes, so give and take. Guys, the fall colors are in full effect around here right now. Like, it's just, it's fun to get out and like drop kids off at school or pick them up again because you just get to see like, wow. Isn't nature freaking amazing? These trees. In Southern Illinois, we have a lot of trees. We're kind of on the verge of a very forested area. We just have some thick areas of trees, even, you know, within town, certain areas, and they just look beautiful. Just the splashes of bright red and orange and yellow. It's like nobody knew that it was gonna come together that way, but just, you know, nature's perfection. I think I've got this brow done. I still feel like it's not, I don't know. We'll end it there. I would say this is one of the better experiences I've had with a with a brow pen. We'll see how well it does actually last. I'm kind of doubting that that's gonna actually 
provide any hold in my brows. That also wasn't a big claim with it anyway. But if I use some of this Brow Fast Sculpt, then I think I'll be happy with where things are going. Okay guys, now for eyes. Um, I, this was also part of the PR package. They say new and improved on the palettes here. True Naked, Desert Heat, and this one says, that's rad. Mm. The Desert Heat looks really good. There'll be people who say, you should use that one. And then, to further add to my, what do I use? Um, I got this Play It Jewel palette from ColourPop, and guys, this looks gorgeous. I almost think I'm gonna sit this aside for a little while longer. I mean, some beautiful array of textures and colors and the jewel tones, the richness, you know, so so much richness down in here. And I almost feel like when I talk about this in a video, I wanna have done more looks with it. I wanna have be able to have more to say about it, you know? So I am gonna sit this one aside, but know that more, more will be coming because I got a really good feeling about that one. So first, while we make our difficult decision here. I'm going to put on some Milani eyeshadow primer. Feeling good about the skin, feeling good about the brows, feeling amazing about the hair. <sighs> there are so many times where I'm like, I, I want to get up here just a little early so I can get some hot rollers in and do a really nice style. That's often the intent, but I gotta say my hair is just not clean today. So this is where we're at. Whichever one I don't use, I promise I will follow up. More people might like this. This would be something different. This one, we have a black. We've got these other shades with some glitz. They do appear to be, mm, some of the glitz is looking a little flaky, but we do have some nice pigment with some of these other shades that are matte and or like a, kind of a rich shimmer finish like this or that. They do feel good, but I just think there's gonna be more universal interest and intrigue probably with the Desert Heat. So I'm gonna use that, but I will use That's Rad um, at another time. You know, I'm doing makeup every single day, so we'll fit it in. Let's see what this is all about. Let's go to this shade here, some matte. Mattes appear to be here, here, here and here is literally just every other one. So I'm using that first, like kind of lightest, yeah, lightest. Rain alert. I love my Weather Channel app. I love when they do that. Like it'll be rain alert or when it's snowing, snow alert. Oh, always gets me excited. And it's not like it's raining right now, but it's like within a very short amount of time, you've got that warning, you know? So if you were playing outside or, you know, needing to do something. You've got that little guidance and it's very accurate too. Okay, so there's that light shade. It went on well, um, as pigmented as I'd need it to be. I'm gonna move down the line to the next matte. Adding a little richness, nothing over the top, but certainly getting in there with ease. I love a matte layering situation. Was that just my stomach growling or was that a child? I think that was me. Really, really super nice. We've got a really beautiful bit of warmth right here, and I'm very compelled by this end shade. Sorry, middle finger. It's a brown that looks like it's got maybe a little bit of a plum thing happening. Not sure yet, but this is the more like rusty, bring it up, like I'm <laughs> kind of running out of space, but I'll blend over this, don't worry. Uh, really soft and pigmented, you guys. Beautiful to work with. I don't have a light matte highlight, but there is a really light shimmer here. Maybe we'll just take a dab, dab a -roo of that. I remember being back in high school and there was a girl who, well, I thought at the time she had really good makeup. She just seemed like she knew what was going on with makeup. Keep in mind, this was the late 90s, early 2000s, but she had a, a real opaque streak of highlighter directly under her brow. Um, that was before we even used words like highlighter. I thought that was really cool. Anyways, let's let's take a flat brush. We've just got to see what this does in my normal, like the way I would use it. I got to pat some on the lid. This is just what I'd be doing if I was here alone trying this stuff out. Okay, it's good. It's pigmented. The shade itself is not incredibly dark, but it's manageable and it does it does provide some contrast. I wouldn't mind if it was even darker. Building slightly. It can be built. Wait, that was weird. It's like the, the topmost layer of this was lighter and now I go back into the pan 
over the same part where I already took some away and it's like I'm getting more darkness. Interesting. Definitely buildable with the darkness and again like I, I just kind of took off the top layer and it's darker underneath. Okay cover girl, whatever you say. Picking up some with my small pointed brush. We're just seeing how dark can it get. I like that tone a lot. Like that's a really sp actually special tone of brown I think because it's not a, a straight up warm brown. It's a brown mixed with plum, I'd say. And it's blending over these other mattes with a lot of ease and it's buildable. There is a nice softness to all of these. Does anybody remember those Maybelline, I wanna say they were called iStudio quads. And they were like, they almost looked like little arrow shaped eyeshadows, like little short arrows. And these are just like that kind of formula. They used to have like a, a definite softness, easy to apply and blend. And I remember they'd always come out with like a seasonal limited edition kind of shade. Like there would be fall ones and everybody would talk about going to Walgreens and getting those. Okay, desert heat. I like it. Okay, I before I move on to the shimmer, I will take the dark shade. I'm tapping off just a little excess with that one but I want that smoky smudge all around the eye. Lovely, lovely. I'm really intrigued by this shade right here. It's mm, like a nice deep rose gold. We've got something that looks more like a bright copper here, a gold and then the pearl. Um, but this looks like kind of a deepened rose gold. It almost reminds me a little bit of that shade I put on the lid from the Charlotte Tilbury palette, only warmer, not so like pinky mauve. Okay, that's pretty. I like that they didn't go with sort of a sparkle shimmer with these. They're really smooth shimmers, if you know what I mean. They're hanging together. There's a nice soft texture. I am seeing in this one some more sparkle and glitz in the textures, and at least the way they swatch, some of them seem kind of light, and maybe there's a little flake to that. Um, I will try it, but... So far, this is seeming really nice. And then I'm gonna use some of the pearly shade just to see what that brings to the table right in here. I kind of wish they would have thrown in a shimmering sands in the new PR package. <laughs> Here's another thing the kids need to know about. Okay, that light shade works really well around the inner corner. Very nicely brightening. I really should have cleaned off my brush before I did that. I had some darkness. So did I do a very standard look for me? Yes, I did. But was I trying to just assess the overall, like what's this gonna do? I'm not gonna apply it in a real off the wall manner as my first time experimenting with it. You know, I wanna get an accurate read on how these shades do. And I would say I'm quite impressed. If you're looking for a very approachable, compact, warm eyeshadow palette, um, I found a lot of ease with this one. Um, I like that it does give you options because whether you choose the copper or the dark rose gold or the gold or the lighter shade, it's gonna change your overall look. A nice gradient of mattes that aren't too far apart from one another. So if you're kind of a beginner and you're like, you know, I, I don't like jumping from one extreme to the other, you know, you could do exactly what I did in this video and start with this, make it a little darker, make it a little warmer, bring in the richness. And all those shades are just very friendly with one another. They really merge easily and you don't have to work hard to make that happen, you know? So I, I like that. I think it definitely has its place in the makeup world, you know? And then you guys, I'm testing a mascara. It'll be my first time using it today, the Level Up Lengthening Mascara from ColourPop. Um, I have it in black, and so I'm not gonna do any eyeliner because I really just wanna see more clearly what this is gonna do on my lashes. Shiseido Lash Curler, the ultimate stocking stuffer for anyone and everyone. Okie doke, what kind of a brush are we looking at? This is my first time using it. Oh wow, super duper normal, like. <laughs> Nothing off the wall. We're looking at a real standard kind of cone-shaped brush tapered toward the tip. Not seeming real wet. Oh no, a little messy. There's a little bit of a dryness. There's a little bit of a pull. Like as I'm putting it on the lash, I can feel it. I can feel that extending, you know, rather than just slipping over the lash, if you know what I mean, like a lot of really wet mascaras might do. I may have just saved that with just the Q-tip. Going back over it. A little 
wiggle and a pull. It's doing a good job. Like it, it's just extending right up through those lashes. I mean, not a lot of work done to get there. Let's try this side and then I'll probably go back to this other side. Not often that my first go round with a mascara is really good. It's just very tempting to want to just get in there. You know what I mean? Like really wiggle it and stuff. And then it's like, no, I'm going to boop myself on the, on the lid. That's what it's called when you hit yourself with the mascara wand, booping yourself. Boop. I really think it's lengthening and it's pretty defining. It's got a dryness about it and kind of a, a stretch. Maybe the separation isn't the most incredible. I feel like I'm kind of having to work them out of themselves a little. I ran back over to this eye. Yeah, it, it does dry fairly quick and I think that's going to help my curl hold. But I can just feel like as I'm touching it here, it feels a little dry. If you build with another coat, just do it like fairly soon after the first. I'm having a few more lashes sticking together over here on this eye. But I feel like this is a mascara I could really enjoy. You know, the formula agrees with me overall. I do have a couple little places here that I may just dab some shadow over top. I hate when I do that. And then you gotta repair the other side, even if it doesn't need it. Okay, camera stopped on me, but I just did a little lower mascara with my Thrive Liquid Lash Extensions. And then, I know a lot of cover girl in this video, right? But they sent some Exhibitionist Ultra Matte Lipsticks. Um, they sent some really bright shades, like bright red, a couple of tones of red, a hot pink. And then this one's called Jam Pack. And I don't know, I'm kind of like willing to give it a go here. Um, Ooh, it's really purple. I'm gonna try to wear it in a more sheer way and somebody should have exfoliated their lips. That's what this is revealing to me. Um, it is very matte. I'm just gonna do kind of a dabaroo with this. I think this is gonna be really pretty actually. It's just full on, it seems, a lot darker than I might wanna wear, you know? I'm, I'm literally just getting some on my finger, dabbing it like so. Working into your lips almost like it's a stain. And then I'm going to pull in some lip liner. Maybe we'll try Color Stay Raisin just to neaten it up. Finger application of a dark shade doesn't lead to the neatest application. This is a little warmer than the lipstick. Wow, I have really dark lips today. <laughs> it is velvety. It does kind of feel like it's set, like there's very little moisture on there and you know, no shine. Pretty color in the sheer mode for me. That's what I like. But yeah, guys, here's my full look with this new PR makeup that I received. Um, what's old is new again. Apparently we used the clean, fresh makeup, which gave us, I would say, a, a light to medium buildable coverage that wasn't 100% matte. I thought it had a little bit of a glow to it. And the addition of a full coverage concealer made me very satisfied with the overall coverage on the skin. Um, we used those new blush palettes. We got the cream and the powder. I really thought both were good. I'm a little bit wondering how much I'm gonna like this shade on its own as blush because it didn't turn out to be a highlighter. But very excited about working in some of the deeper cream blush shade as well. Those are so easy to blend. In some formulas, that shade might scare me on my skin tone, but not really here because it stays so thin and so blendable. Our new CoverGirl eyeshadow palettes. I'm gonna be trying this one, but I thought this was really good. And I just see it as a nice, um, approachable, beginner-friendly kind of palette. The shades are pigmented and they are satisfying to use, but it was designed in such a way with such a nice easy gradient. And I think I already explained how, you know, the blending can be easy when you're not jumping, taking a far jump from one shade to the next. I really think I'm going to be enjoying this mascara. I think it's very nicely lengthening. I didn't get quite as good a do on this eye, but uh, you know, I'll be working with it. Level Up Lengthening Mascara from ColourPop. That was nice. Going to be also playing with that new ColourPop Big Palette I showed you. And the lipstick here, I don't know how new these exhibitionist lipsticks actually are, but I would say like I'm just looking a little dry in the center. I would have um, exfoliated first. If I did, I think it would have looked completely smooth across the lips. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you'd like to see more like this, and I will see you again very soon. Love you. Bye.